Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just recently discovered TikTok. I originally thought it was all dancing videos, but I have found so many Cricut videos on TikTok and now I spend just way too much time scrolling through TikTok. But as I've been scrolling, I have found so many fun Cricut hacks. So I wanted to share that with you all today. You don't have to be on TikTok to enjoy this video. Also, I have another Cricut Hacks video that I will link down below, but these will be 20 new Cricut Hacks, which is really exciting. I have saved my favorite one for last, so definitely make sure you do not miss that. Also, I have linked the TikTok accounts below to give them credit for these Cricut Hacks. Let me know which hack is your favorite in the comments and make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it subscribe if you are new to my channel and let's just get into the video I am starting off the hack video with some weeding tips grab a Clorox wipe container and the spot where the wipes pull through is perfect for getting the vinyl off your hook I seriously love this hack and once the container is full you can just throw it away Here's another awesome weeding tip. Grab a lint roller and just stick the weeded vinyl on it. Since the lint roller is sticky, it releases the vinyl super easy. Once the lint roller has vinyl pieces on it, you can just take a piece off of it and just throw it away. This next weeding hack that I found on TikTok is grab a sewing needle and a mechanical pencil and place the sewing needle inside of the pencil and use that as a weeder. I think the needle wasn't quite the right size or I should have used a different mechanical pencil because the sewing needle pushed back up into the pencil a few times, but it still worked really well. I'm actually thinking about purchasing a weeding pin now. This next weeding hack isn't from TikTok, but I use it a lot. You've probably seen me use it on my channel, and I always get a lot of questions about it. It's actually a nail polish holder. I buy it from Amazon for around $9. I'll have a link down below, and it works well when weeding vinyl. I also like hanging this up on my pegboard in my craft room. This next Cricut tip I found on TikTok, I use it every time I use transfer tape. It really is amazing the difference it makes. When you're transferring your vinyl onto transfer tape, scrape down the front and the back of the vinyl, then take the paper backing away. You can see when I just scrape the front and try to pull the clear transfer tape away, it doesn't fully pick up the vinyl. A lot of it sticks to the back. Now I'll turn it around and scrape the back, then I'll pull the backing away and you can see how it pulls the vinyl up onto the transfer tape so much easier. You might still have to go in and burnish it back down with your scraper a little, but it's amazing how much easier it is pulling the backing of the transfer paper away. It's always difficult trying to figure out what font you want to use for a project. So this is a really easy way to do it. You'll go to wordmark.it and at first when I went to this, my downloaded fonts from like defont.com or any of the fonts that I bought was not showing up in here. It was only just the standard fonts that came with my computer. So I had to add an extension to it for it to show up. So you might have to do that, but what you do is just enter a word. So I'm just gonna type in hello and hit enter. Then it will show all of your fonts and show you what it looks like with that word spelled out. This is really cool because it will just help you decide what you want to use. And another neat thing about this, let's say you want a nice script font for your project. You can select some of the script fonts that you have downloaded. Let's grab one more. Then you can go up here. Once you start selecting, it'll say filter selected and then it'll show just the fonts that you have selected. So it will give you an even better idea of what you want to use for your project. So this is an awesome website. For this TikTok hack, if you have removable vinyl that you want to use but need it to last longer on something, try adding the vinyl to your blank, then add Mod Podge on top. I made this last Christmas. I found the removable vinyl at the Target dollar spot and wanted to use it, and the Mod Podge actually worked really well to prevent the vinyl from picking up. 
Another fun hack that I saw was to use these paper craft punch. I don't know exactly what they're called, but I found them on Amazon and they have different designs on them and you can use these on your vinyl scraps. These would be fun to make different projects like nail decals or scrapbooking and as you can see, you just punch it and it cuts out the design. Here's a way you can center your iron-on design on your shirts. You'll need a dry erase marker. I'm adding a couple extra steps from what I saw on the TikTok video. I like to fold my shirt in half and run my Cricut Easy Press over the shirt. It'll show a line going down so you know where the center is. Next, fold the shirt the other way horizontally by grabbing the armpits of the shirt. This helps me make sure that it's straight. Now fold your iron-on design in half, lining it up at the end of each design, not at the end of the carrier sheet. Make sure you don't fold it on the sticky side. Then I pinch a little at the top because I don't want the vinyl to crease. This is how I normally line up my shirt, but I saw the dry erase tip on TikTok. Grab a dry erase marker and using a ruler to make a line going down the center. Then I did it the other direction as well. Next, place the vinyl sheet on your shirt. The horizontal lines probably won't line up on top of each other. It will probably be lower than the line, but it's just a good way to make sure it's straight, but you will line up the vertical lines on top of each other. Then you can just erase the marker on your shirt and place whatever heat source you're using to make your shirt. This next hack that I found on TikTok is how to change one layer into two layers. A lot of times it's fun to do this with tumblers, do a holographic color with a solid color. So I'm going to go over to images and search for a butterfly in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to grab this one and hit insert image. As you can see, it is just one layer, but I'm going to make it two layers by using the contour button. I actually use the contour button a lot to make different layers, but I didn't have this in my other Cricut Hacks video, so I thought this would be great to add to this one. So what you do is hit duplicate, then go down to contour. For the first one, we want just the solid background, which is this layer right here. What I like to do instead of clicking on each one separately is hit hide all contours. Then you can see it hid all of these but this solid background. When you hit the X or click out, you can see it's just solid. So we'll just change it to black. And then this one, you can change it to whatever color you like and you can um, send this to the back and then you have two different layered colors. These are really fun to use on Starbucks cups. It's fun to make this like a holographic color or you can also make the background holographic color. For this hack, I am going to be showing a cool way to weed out this type of font, which it's really difficult to weed out these tiny little pieces. And I've made a shirt with a font like this before, and it was extremely difficult. So I'm excited to see if this works. I thought I was done with weeding tips, but I actually found another one. I've weeded out the inside of the letters, but I'm going to try to use a lint roller to get the rest of the pieces out of there. When I first tried this, I had nothing on my lint roller and it was way too sticky. It picked up a whole letter. I was able to get the letter back down and I rubbed the lint roller against my shirt so it wouldn't be too sticky. I tried it again and it definitely did pick up some of this. Next time I might try to make the lint roller even less sticky, but I think this is a pretty cool hack for these tricky brush type fonts. How to get the most out of your stickers on Print and Cut. Cricut limits the size of Print and Cut by 9.25 by 6.75. You cannot print anything larger than that, but I have a fun hack on how to get the most out of that. So what you'll do is go to shapes and grab a square, then go up to unlock. And what I'm going to do is set the width and height for the max size for print and cut. For the width, I'm going to do 6.75 and then I'll do it by 9.25. 
So this is the largest you can print with Print Thin Cut. So let's say that I am making some stickers. I'm gonna go to Uploads and grab one of my SVGs and insert that into Cricut Design Space. And let's say I wanna make it about two inches. So that's about two inches wide. Really quickly too, I am just gonna go to my shapes and grab a circle to put behind this. So I'm gonna send this to the back and I'm also gonna make it just a white color. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna highlight over both of these in center. I'm just doing this really quickly just as an example. Then I am going to flatten that. So now I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm actually gonna make it a little bit smaller. Then what I'm gonna do is duplicate these and you'll just put it inside of the rectangle. And this gives you an idea of how many you can fit on one print and cut page. Then I'm just gonna select these and duplicate. And I'll just do it a couple more times. I actually do this on my stickers video that I have. So I did this before I even really knew about this tape. And that's probably about all that you would want. I'm even going to move these down just a little bit. One thing that you need to watch out for also is the bleed. I always recommend keeping the bleed on when you do print thin cut because it helps get a sharper crisp line on your cuts. But because of that, it'll kind of go over a little bit. So you don't want these too close together. Another thing I would do is just attach all these together. I would just delete this rectangle since we're done with that and attach. Now that it's attached, I'll show you when you click on the Make It screen. So this white rectangle here, that is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So you can see it almost takes up the whole entire sheet. So that way you can still use up as much as you possibly can. So that is a great hack. Now I'll get straight into the next tip. If you click on Continue when you're in the Print and Cut settings, select Send a Printer. And I'm going to show you how to save this as a PDF file if you wanted to. It'll come up with this print setup screen, then select use system dialog, then click on print. It'll come up with this screen. And if you look down at the bottom left corner, it'll say PDF. If you select that, you can go down to save as PDF. Then you can save it as handmade with loves stickers then click on save. That just went to my documents, so I just double clicked on that, and here you can see it is saved as a PDF file. I have a couple more print and cut tips to share for you. I deleted the rest of those and just have one just to save some ink on my printer, and I am going to click make it and show you a couple of my print and cut hacks. I'll click on continue and send this to my printer. I'll change it to best quality and I'm just going to hit print. My printer will just print this out. I'm going to be adding clear contact paper over my matte sticker paper and I am going to browse for my setting. I did some test cuts to figure out which one worked the best and it ended up being the clear printable sticker paper cut it out perfectly. I'm going to select that and hit done. I'm using full sheets of sticker labels for my stickers, but I also have Cricut printable vinyl that I use as well. These are both matte sheets, so I want to show you how to get glossy stickers using contact paper like this one. Just peel the contact paper off of the sheet and place it over your stickers. You want to place it carefully so you do not get too many air bubbles. Then I will take my scraper tool and scrape it down to make sure I have no bubbles in there. Now you can just load this into the Cricut machine and the Cricut will cut it out just like that. This setting worked really well because you can just pick up the sticker but keep that backing. I just love that glossy look for stickers and you can even get it wet and it will not smear at all. 
This next hack is such an awesome one. I'm just going to show you really quickly. If you try to cut out glossy paper on the Cricut Explore Air, it really struggles to read those black registration lines. As you can see, it is coming up with an error. So I want to show you a trick on how to make this work. All you need to do is take scotch tape and make sure it's the matte finish. Then you'll just take that tape and place it over the black registration lines. By just doing that, the Cricut Explore Air 2 will be able to read it. I was excited when I saw this tip on TikTok. Store vinyl in a 12 by 12 scrapbook. This is perfect for my 12 by 12 Oracle 651 sheets of vinyl. These would also work great for scrap vinyl. I store mine in a binder, but I love the scrapbook idea. Here's what I store my vinyl and cardstock in currently. The tower is from Michaels and the bins fit 12 by 12 sheets of vinyl and paper. So it's great for storing my materials. I just wanted to share another option as well. The next hack that I learned on TikTok is if you go to text and search for a script font, I am just going to use Magnolia Sky as an example. Then when you type it in, you can see how the letter spacing is always separated and you have to connect it together. So you usually have to go to letter space and bring that in. And then it never fully puts it how you want it. So I always have to go to ungroup and move this around. So this always takes up just a little bit of a, a little bit of time. So you kind of have to move that in and then weld it together. So somebody shared on TikTok that you can go over to your launch pad. I am on a Mac computer and I am going to search for text edit. On a Windows computer, you should have a text screen. If you search just text, um, you should be able to find it. I'm going to double click on that. Then I'll select new document. Now I'm going to search for Magnolia Sky. And I'm going to type in thank you. Then I am just going to make this a lot bigger. And you can see it cuts it off there. So I'm also going to move it a little bit. And it capitalized my T. So I'm just going to move it to a lowercase t. So after doing that, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. On a Windows computer, you will search for the snipping tool. And on the Mac, you'll hit shift command 4. And I am just going to take a screenshot here. Then I am just going to save this to my photos. Now I'm back in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to click on Upload and search for it. I moved it from my photos to my documents. And I'm just going to double click here. I'll hit Complex. Then you'll want to take the wand and delete the background. Then hit continue, save it as a cut image, and then you'll insert it into Cricut Design Space. I'm not sure if that hack is necessarily faster, but it does line it up perfectly for you, so I thought it was a good tip to add into the video. This next hack is a way to easily remove backgrounds. I was really excited for this hack because I've been looking for something like this. It's called remove.bg. And I just went over to Google and I searched for free butterfly images. I'm just using this as an example. I'm just going to click on one of these. And let's say you just want the, the butterfly with the flower. So what I'm going to do is just right click and save this image. Then I'm going to go back over here and click upload image. I'm going to double click on the one that I downloaded and it automatically deleted the background. It is so easy. So now I'm going to download it again and then I'm going to go over to Cricut Design Space. I'm going to go to my uploads and find that image with the background deleted. 
I'm going to click on complex because this is a complex image. This would be a good example for one that you would use for print and cut because as you can see a cut image it would just not work well. And I'll insert that into Cricut Design Space. And you can see how it looks without the background. Some of it might need to be cleaned up a little bit which you can do when you upload it. But that is pretty cool. What I want to share next is how to get two of your Cricut machines running at the same time. So this is a way that you can save some time, especially if you have your own business. I'm just going to upload a random design. All of these images are patron images also. So if you are interested in these images for just $4.99 a month, we're over 100 images right now. You can use it for personal and commercial use. Definitely check out the link in my description box if you want to get some more info on that. So I'll bring this into Design Space. I'm just going to make it smaller. Then I'm going to change it to a draw image. I'm just going to have the Cricut draw this on a piece of paper just to give you an example of how to do this. I'm going to click on group and just change a few things really quickly. I'm going to change the flower to blue and then I'll keep the words black. I'm just going to attach all of this together. I'll use my Explorer for my first machine then I'll click on make it. Go to File, then select New Window. It will bring up a different Cricut Design Space window. You can choose a different project or you can use change or select the same one. Hit Customize. I'm going to be drawing this on my Maker, so I'll switch it to Maker Machine. And I'm just going to make this smaller so you can see that we have two windows open. I'll make this one smaller too. So here you can see we have the maker selected. I'm going to click on make it. Oh, I'm going to go back. I did not attach that together. So I'm going to select on all of this and select attach. Now I'm ready to click make it. So as you can see we have this screen the maker is going to cut out and this screen will be the explore machine. So I am going to select continue on both screens. On this one I found my maker machine, on this one I found the Air 2. I'm using my two USB cords that I have, but you can also connect it to Bluetooth through your laptop if you want even more than two machines going at a time. Here is both of the machines going at the same time. I just think this is an awesome tip. This last hack is seriously genius when layering adhesive vinyl. Once again, I linked the TikTok users down below so I can give them credit because this is just so smart. What you'll need is parchment paper. Lay one down with one of your layer pieces on top of the parchment paper, then grab a second piece of parchment paper. Take your transfer tape and place it on one of the pieces you are going to be layering. I like to use the clear duck brand contact paper when layering vinyl. You can buy this at Walmart or Amazon. Grab the second parchment paper and place it on top of the black bottom layer of the vinyl. Do not cover the whole piece with the parchment paper. Leave a little bit out as you can see. Start to place the first layered piece on. Place it on the side that doesn't have the parchment paper. Then put the rest of the decal down over the parchment paper. It doesn't stick that much on that parchment paper. You can see if it's lined up correctly and if it's not you can easily readjust it. This is so awesome for layering vinyl because you have to have it lined up just right for all the pieces to fit and permanent vinyl is so sticky so if it accidentally sticks down and it's not in the right spot then you will most likely have to redo the whole thing. Once you have it placed where you like it, scrape down the side without the parchment paper then remove the parchment paper. Now you can just take off your transfer tape. I'll show you how I do this method with the rest of the pieces.
Now I just add the tongue. I should have used transfer paper, but I was just getting kind of lazy, but here it is. This hack is absolutely amazing. And that is all for my Cricut hack video. Let me know if you want me to do a second video. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new to my channel and don't forget to check out my Patreon account in the description box below.